increase as the morning continues. That does it for me. I'm Kelly Beeson in today for Marnie Hughes. Thanks so much for joining us. We hope you don't go anywhere. Mick, Nick Smith, he picks up our coverage next. Hey, Nick. Thank you very much, Kelly. News Nation Now starts right now. Right now. The infamous standoff at Gate 36. The brand new warning of potential escalating violence within a fortified, militarized zone. Now surrounded by razor wire and armed guards. Biden may have the money, but does he have the star power ahead of the November election? Why fewer musicians may be endorsing the president this time around. Seconds to react. New details on what may have happened just before the catastrophic bridge collapse in Maryland and what happens next for one of America's busiest ports. From trouble to transparency, the king speaks out for the first time since two major health scares rocked the royal family. Thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. I'm Nick Smith in today for Nicole Burley. The rush to survive with only seconds to spare. Today, we're learning more about some of the people who were at the Maryland Bridge collapse and just how fast it came crashing down. This tragedy is believed to have claimed the lives of six construction workers with only two of their bodies having been recovered so far. For others, able to reach safety is something they will surely remember the rest of their lives. Crews are now shifting their attention to clearing the debris from the waterway. Alex Capriello has been in Baltimore from the beginning from the beginning all week long. Alex, we're hearing more and more about these stories of survival in a situation where calm turned into tragedy in the blink of an eye. What more have you learned? Yeah, we can tell you that we are learning more information about both the survivors and then, of course, the victims and the deceased who fell to their death on that Tuesday morning in near frigid, freezing temperatures. Uh, first, let's start with the survivors. Uh, Mexican authorities confirmed that at least one Mexican national was among those that survived. Another we learned last night at a press conference was a state inspector who was actually up on the bridge overseeing the work that was being done by that construction company. And perhaps most importantly, it's all about the first responders who were on that scene that actually saved way more lives. It could have been way more disastrous. Uh, the heroics that they actually did kicking into action and kicking into gear. Consider this, Nick, only 90 seconds between the first Mayday call and to the ship actually colliding with that bridge. That's 90 seconds not only to stop traffic from getting up on that bridge, but also to get out of their police cruisers and audibly yell out to the other workers that were on that bridge to get off of the bridge. Here's uh, the perspective of one survivor from Governor Wes Moore. Take a listen. In fact, uh, one of the, the, the survivors who I had the opportunity to speak with, uh, one of the things he mentioned to me was as he was moving off of the bridge uh, and literally saw the bridge fall right after he moved off, uh, it was because it was a first responder who was telling him to move off of the bridge. And all yesterday we were playing that really heartbreaking audio of the dispatch, and it really was seconds uh, that they had before they could actually alert people to get off the bridge and that ship colliding. We also know the names of some of the dead. Let's go first with the presumed dead, Maynor Yasir Suazo Sandoval and Miguel Luna, as well as two others that have not been named at this point. The U.S. Coast Guard officially able to recover the bodies of two men, Alejandro Hernandez Fuentes and Dorian Ronial Castillo Cabrera. Moving forward, it is no longer about search, rescue, or recovery. It's about clearing this shipping lane. They need to get rid of all of that debris, that construction, the twisted metal that is in the waterway. Once it is cleared, not only will activity resume here on the river, but they get one final chance to do another sweep of that river, hopefully find more cars, which will undoubtedly be containing more bodies. Nick. Alex, you talked about 90 seconds. I can only imagine the shock and the confusion. You're hearing this emergency warning to get out of the way, to get out of harm's way, and then you have to really process that and then react. You also got fresh insight into the NTSB investigation. What exactly are they examining at this moment? What are they looking at? Well, the one thing that we heard most about the NTSB and what they're doing moving forward was about looking, scanning, and recovering recording equipment. And there's one piece of technology called a voyage data recorder in specific that they are looking at. It's now in the hands of the NTSB and it has crucial data, things like the ship speed at the time of the collision, the rudder angle and the overall timeline. But perhaps most importantly, it also contains audio recordings from the captain, from the pilots and from the first mates 
Uh, obviously, the things that they were saying, the discussions they were having, the fixes that they were trying to employ before that actual collision occurred is going to be so important because you can actually hear whatever efforts were being made before disaster actually struck. So NTSB on board that vessel over the past two days. It sounds like they are still going to be on that vessel because next hour I'll tell you about the actual people, the workers, the crew that are still on that vessel, and they're going to be contained in that vessel for the time being while this investigation continues. Yeah, Alex, looking at several different pieces of a puzzle uh, that will hopefully help them put together what happened in this tragedy and why. Alex Capriello, live for us this afternoon. Alex, thank you. Right now, manufacturers and shippers are scrambling to figure out where they can unload cargo after the port of Baltimore abruptly shut down following that collapse. Ship traffic is changing course to other ports along the East Coast with concerns growing over a potential crisis in the supply chain. The Port of Baltimore handles a large amount of goods, including wood, steel, aluminum, home appliances, and in 2023, the port ranked first in the nation for handling cars and light trucks. Get this, the port's closure could cost $15 million per day in economic losses, potentially creating a domino effect of delays. Joining us now, William Doyle, former port administrator for the Port of Baltimore and a man who knows that port inside and out. Mr. Doyle, thank you so much for joining us. Sure, thank you. Talk to us about what we're actually seeing right now on the ground. When we talk about uh, how this port has been disrupted, what does that mean for everyday people at home when we talk about the disruption of, of the commerce moving in and out of the port of, of Baltimore? First, what I would like to say is that uh, excellent response um, on the um, rescue um, and recovery. Okay, so I want to give a shout out to the state officials, the governor, um, Westmore, and Baltimore Mayor uh, Brandon Scott, the police and the fire department, because that's what the first day was. It was looking for bodies and survivors. Now we're in a recovery mode. So in the recovery mode, you see all of the vessels around the ship now, those are surveying. They're surveying the bottom um, of the channel. They're surveying, surveying the walls of the channel. They're using LIDAR, which is light detection and ranging. They're scanning the hull of the ship. Uh, and they're getting ready to uh, move construction into uh, equipment into the area, marine construction equipment, in order to dislodge the vessel and then take the trusses and steel from there in order to open the port and get the channel cleared. Because, Mr. Doyle, from what I'm understanding is until they clear that debris, there's nothing they can do to move anything in and out simply because uh, you don't know where those pieces of steel and, 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 and cement are within that body of water. Exactly. I mean, what you're doing is we're x-raying it right now. So my companies that, that uh, I represent as from the uh, Dredging Contractors of America are doing that work right now. Uh, GBA company, that's one of them. Uh, they're in there and they're scanning the bottom. Now, to get to your question is, you know, Baltimore is. I mean, the, the port of Baltimore is the largest importer and exporter of automobiles and light trucks, farm equipment in the United States of America. Okay. But there's two pieces to Port of Baltimore. You've got Dundalk Marine Terminal, okay? That's inside of the Port of Baltimore, inside of the uh, Francis Scott Key Bridge, okay? That shut down, there's no traffic coming in and out of there. That's the number one auto port. But on the bay side of the Francis Scott Key Bridge is what's known as Great Point Atlantic. That's also a huge automobile facility as well. And that has the BMW brands and the Volkswagen brands all going in and out of Trade Point Atlantic. That will not be disrupted, okay? So you'll have uh, those row-row vessels going in and out of there, okay? Again, Baltimore's not the only port on the East Coast that accepts vehicles. So what you'll see is vehicles going into, say, Savannah, Georgia. That's a big auto port. You've got Wilmington, Delaware. That's an auto port. You've got New York and New Jersey. That's an auto port. So you'll see ships, you know, unloading cargo in those areas and getting them into the stream of commerce for the United States until such time as, you know, we get the um, channel cleared. On your container side, so the containers that you see on that ship, those carry all your, lack of a better term, retail products. That's your retailers. That's your Home Depot, Amazon, Floor and Decor, Wayfair, all of those goods, what Maryland has done a really good job of over the past 10 years, is building a distribution center network 
in and around the Port of Baltimore and a trade point Atlantic to get those goods in and out. However, the way it works in the supply chain and way, the way that we set up gateways in the United States is that Baltimore, in most instances, is a second or third port of call, okay? So ship may be coming from Asia through the Panama Canal, may be coming from Asia uh, through the Suez Canal, may be coming from Europe. It may go to New York first, then Baltimore. It may come from the Panama Canal and go Georgia first, Norfolk second, Baltimore third. So that cargo will get unloaded. Those containers will get unloaded in other port. And then trucking and rail will get it into the mid-Atlantic region. And Mr. Doyle, I've got to let you go. I've got less than five seconds here, but we can say with a certainty, because you've worked in this space, uh, even though this recovery effort is just beginning, you have full faith that the Port of Baltimore will recover and be back and up and operational. Absolutely, and better. William Doyle, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon, sir. Thank you. We turn now to some breaking news in the Sam Bankman Freed cryptocurrency sentencing. You may know him as SBF. Now, Kelsey Kernstein is in the newsroom with details. Kelsey, what can you tell us? Hey there, Nick. Yeah, this just coming into our newsroom. We are just learning now that Sam Bankman Freed was sentenced to 25 years in prison. It is half the time the prosecution was asking for. He did face, however, a maximum sentencing of 110 years in prison. Back in November, a jury found the FTX founder Sam Bankman freed guilty on seven different fraud and conspiracy charges against him just after three hours of negotiation. The trial was holding him responsible for the disappearance of billions of dollars in customer deposits back in 2022. Bankman freed though, is expected to appeal both his conviction and his sentence. Interesting to also note here, he was once considered a crypto titan. He was also evaluated on paper at $32 billion. Nick? Kelsey, we know that there is much more to this story to come. Kelsey Kernstein in the newsroom. Kelsey, thank you. Thank you. Hundreds, potentially thousands of loved ones and colleagues are set to attend a two-day wake for a fallen New York City police officer. On Monday, 31-year-old Jonathan Diller was shot and killed during a traffic stop in Queens. Investigators say Diller and his partner were investigating a vehicle parked illegally at a bus stop. Among those set to pay their respects at today's service, former president and the presumptive 2024 Republican nominee, Donald Trump. News Nation's Caitlin Becker is live out on Long Island. And Caitlin, the Trump campaign says Mr. Trump was indeed invited by the Diller family. That's true, Nick, and we're here at the Massapequa Funeral Home in Long Island, where there is already a massive police presence, many of whom are here to set up for the arrival of the former president, but most of which are here to pay their respects and condolences. A spokesperson from the former president's office said that he was moved by the invitation from Diller's family to come and support his loved ones, and we do expect him here within the next couple of hours, followed by Mayor Eric Adams. But this tragic murder has really touched a political nerve because authorities say the two suspects involved in this, allegedly involved in this fatal shooting, had long, very massive criminal records. A 31-year-old NYPD officer lost his life. His wife lost her husband. Their newborn child, less than a year old, lost their father. All because the legislature refuses and continues to refuse to react and act by changing these laws to keep criminals in prison. Now, those are points former President Trump hit on while giving condolences to Diller's family in a post on Truth Social, writing in part, quote, the, quote, thug in question has 21 prior arrests and just recently got out of prison. He never should have been let back on the streets. Now, tough on crime is a major pillar of Trump's presidential campaign. He's been extremely critical of Democratic crime policies. But according to the FBI, crime statistics, however, in the last quarter of 2023, crime was actually trending down. Murders down 13 percent, violent crime down six, and property crime down 4 percent as compared to that same time frame in 2022. Property crime, however, was up in major cities. But crime is an important issue for voters. A recent poll found six out of ten voters thinks that that should be a political priority. Nick? Yeah, and Caitlin, when we hear those numbers and people on the street actually telling us, when we ask them, do they feel safer, and they say no, those numbers don't mean a thing to real people at home. Caitlin, one quick question for you. Two suspects have been arrested, but why has only one been charged so far? 
Well, actually, Nick, it's because the other one is currently hospitalized. So Diller was fatally shot while on a routine traffic stop, and two suspects were brought into custody. I can give you a little bit of information in there of that, about them and their this shooting death. The driver of this vehicle, 41-year-old Lindley Jones, was arrested, and the passenger is 31-year-old Guy Rivera. Now, police believe Rivera was the shooter, and during the incident, Diller's partner actually returned fire, striking Rivera, who remains in the hospital in critical condition. Now, we do expect charges to be pending against him, but in the meantime, Lindley was arraigned on weapons charges, and there was a massive showing of support from the NYPD for Diller during that hearing. Nick? Caitlin Becker live on Long Island. Caitlin, thank you. Former President Trump's legal team is back in the courtroom today, pushing to throw out his Georgia election interference case. The former president and his defense team say Trump's actions related to the 2020 election were political speech and advocacy, freedoms protected under the First Amendment. Today's hearing is the first time the size will be in court since a judge ruled that Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis can remain on the case. News Nation's Elizabeth Prine is following the story and joins us live from Atlanta. Elizabeth, some legal experts have argued that Ms. Willis should have just recused herself uh, from the very beginning in the best interest of this case. Yeah, there's certainly commentary on that, Nick. And so when we talk about those dismissals, we've been talking about the, those uh, motions for months. Now we're back on that RICO case. The court adjourned about 45 minutes ago. Judge Scott McAfee did not make a decision or give a timeline on whether or not he would make a decision in regards to the motions that were proposed. What are pretrial motions? It's an opportunity for both sides to either get charges dismissed or removed or to tinker with the language in those motions. So we heard from Steve Sadow. Now, that is former President Trump's lead counsel. He was the first one uh, at bat, if you will. And what he really did was defined in his definition and his understanding the First Amendment rights of his client. So he painted really in broad strokes. He outlines almost every charge that the former president is facing, he says, is protected under the First Amendment, that political speech is a form of expression, therefore it needs more protection. The state, obviously, fundamentally disagreeing with that. They have a different interpretation. And they say that the indictment alleges former President Trump employed criminal intent. So that includes conspiracy. That includes filing false documents. That includes impersonation. So their interpretations are hugely different. I, I want to play both sides for you to get a better understanding. Here they are this morning. We have decided that because of those views were unpopular and in state's opinion false, we must prosecute them to stop them from happening again. And when actually what the state is saying is that these statements made by the defendant were all employed as part of criminal activity, various conspiracies, frauds, intentions with deceit and violation of the law. It's not just that they were false. So after about an hour of both sides going back and forth, we also heard a motion filed on behalf of one of the co-defendants. His name is David Schaefer. And that was to dismiss charges in relation to allegations that he organized uh, to work to falsely certify the election to attempt to organize false electors. There was a lot of uh, discussion around the fake elector term. That is similar. That is the language that his counsel wants removed. Obviously, they want his charges dismissed, and they're vying for that. But they're saying if this does go in front of a jury, they want that language dismissed. The state went back and said indictment needs language to, uh, to paint a picture, to come to a conclusion, to have descriptive language. Moving forward, Nick, there are those 36 charges the president is facing. We had 90 minutes of those pretrial motions today. The judge can rule within any time period on whether or not he'll be dismissing any of those motions. There are other co-defendants that have filed motions. Remember, this is just a delay. These are what we could have been listening to for months. We're just getting underway with a lot of these motions. Remember, the district attorney said she wanted to go to trial in August. That now being hugely unlikely. Uh, it's unlikely that we could even see it before the end of the year. Nick, back to you. And Elizabeth, now we wait. Elizabeth Fran live for us in Atlanta, Georgia. Elizabeth, Thank you. Coming up, we're learning more about the death of a college student, Riley Strain. The three things that were missing when his body was found. Next. Plus, two days after federal authorities searched his homes after allegations involving sex trafficking and sexual assault, Sean P. Diddy Combs is vowing to fight the allegations. His attorney saying he's being targeted by a witch hunt. That and more when we come back. 
Starting a business is never easy, but starting at eight months pregnant, that's a different story. With the Chase Inc. card, we got up and running in no time. Earn unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase with the Chase Inc. Business Unlimited card. Make more of what's yours. Whatever happens now, someone else knows the truth. What if there is a murderer walking among us? We need to find a link between the victims. This village really is a place where murder is easy. Now streaming on BritBox with the largest collection of Agatha Christie. What's next? The whole collection of these magnificent. Isn't she marvellous? Stream the best of British TV only on BritBox. Start a free trial at BritBox.com. I'm Jonathan Lawson. If you're 50 to 85, I have an important message about security. Write down the number on your screen so you can call when I finish. The lock I want to talk to you about isn't the one on your door. This is a lock for your life insurance, a rate lock that guarantees that once you're insured, your rate can never go up at any time for any reason. But be careful. Many policies you see do not have one, but you can get a lifetime rate lock from Colonial Pen. Call this number to learn more. This plan was designed with a rate lock for people on a fixed income who want life insurance that fits their budget and is simple to get. Coverage options start at $9.95 a month, less than 35 cents a day. Act now and your rate will be locked in for life. It will never increase, guaranteed. This is lifelong coverage that can never be canceled as long as you pay your premiums, guaranteed. And your acceptance is guaranteed with no health questions. You cannot be turned down because of your health. Call for your information kit and read about this rate lock for yourself. You'll also get a free beneficiary planner. Both are free with no obligation. Don't miss out. Call for information, then decide. Read about the 30-day 100% money back guarantee. Don't wait, call this number now. Call now and you'll also get this free beneficiary planner. Use this valuable guide to record important information and your final wishes. And it's yours free just for calling. So don't wait. Call 1-800-377-5321 for your free information. That's 1-800-377-5321. There's no risk or obligation. That number again is 1-800-377-5321. That's 1-800-377-5321. So call now. You thought you knew Cuomo. See the game, my friends. Expose the game. The real Chris just might surprise you. So you can change the game. Cuomo, weeknights at 8, 7 central, only on News Nation. News for all America. The mystery surrounding Sean Diddy Combs has deepened by the day since the feds raided his mansions from coast to coast. Authorities collected evidence from the musicians' Los Angeles and Miami homes. Both properties were raided as a result of a U.S. attorney's investigation. Details have not been released, with authorities only saying it's a sex trafficking probe. This comes as body cam footage is just being released of Sean Combs' associate, Brendan Paul, being led away by police officers Monday at an airport just outside of Miami. He's been charged with drug possession. Diddy is still in the country and has not been charged with any crimes. The rapper and producer has been accused of sexually assaulting several women. News Nation's Brooke Schaefer is following the story and joins us live from Miami. Brooke, what are the rapper's lawyers actually saying behind all of this media blitz? Well, Nick, attorneys for the music mogul are still defiant, saying that the federal searches earlier this week were a, quote, gross use of military level force. The hip hop star's former attorney telling News Nation the same, speaking with News Nation's Marky Martin this morning on Morning in America, answering the question so many are asking, where is Sean Diddy Combs? I know he's not out of the country. He's here in the U.S. and my understanding he's resolute in defending these these charges and which aren't actually not charges yet so i guess i would properly call them allegations and i think it's fair to say that he's uh, extremely upset and doesn't believe that any of this uh, is true so while that attorney says the music mogul is still in the States, we don't know if Diddy is still in the Miami area. This video from TMZ showed him in Miami on Monday when the raids happened. And we have some new pictures also from TMZ of that same day 
They show Diddy at that Miami airport with a group of people. We know Homeland Security and Miami-Dade police met the group at that airport. They arrested one person accused of having drugs in his bags. 25-year-old Brendan Paul referred to as Diddy's drug mule in a recent lawsuit. We're still waiting, though, for more details on Monday's federal raids. Our sources say several electronics were seized as part of an ongoing sex trafficking investigation. We don't know if the music mogul was the target of the search. His attorney is saying Combs is innocent and will continue to fight to clear his name. And Nick, I should tell you, our team was out there this morning on Star Island outside of Diddy's home in Miami Beach. Police told us today that we're not allowed to park out there anymore, although it was very quiet there this morning. So far, still no sign of Diddy. Nick? Brooke, I can tell you this is really one that so many people I know are following because his music really is a catalog of our generation. Brooke Schaefer, live for us this afternoon in Miami. Brooke, thank you so much. Still to come, he might have the money, but does Biden have the star power? The stark differences four years can make leading up to an election. And questions swirling and a family not getting the answers they seek. We have exclusive new details about the moment a college student was found dead. Next. If I would have kept making only the minimum payments on my credit cards, my debt would have taken me 47 years to pay off. Whether it's credit card, medical, or personal loan debt, National Debt Relief negotiates with your creditors to reduce the amount you owe. National Debt Relief reduced my debt by about 40%. And you could be debt-free in as little as 24 to 48 months. Call or visit nationaldebtrelief.com to find out how you can become debt-free. Accidents happen everywhere and every day. Sweep it up the easy way with the Helio Air Broom, the lightweight, flexible broom that's sweeping the nation. In one pass, it gets it all. Watch, ordinary brooms only get half the mess, but Air Broom's Ultra Flex Blade is specially designed to lift and grip and leave nothing behind. And for anything that hits the floor, it's a one-stop shop with the Helio Dustpan. For pets, it's the best. It easily removes pet hair on all floors. The Helio Air Broom gets the big stuff, yet precise enough for the finest dust. Use it wet or dry. Clean spilled milk and cereal and an impossible to clean broken egg. Plus, it rinses clean every time. For hard surfaces like tile, it's the best. If you've got expensive hardwood floors, the Helio Air Broom is guaranteed to sweep without scratching. Plus, it gets into corners quick and easy. Use it in the bathroom. It'll sweep up hair, nail clippings, and floss. And with its telescopic handle, it becomes a squeegee too. Air Broom's sleek and slim, so you can store it anywhere. Watch, Helio's specially designed Lift and Grip Ultra Flex Blade effortlessly removes dust and hair on carpet, keeping your home mess-free. You'll love Helio or your money back guaranteed. So get your ultra lightweight Helio Air Broom at helioairbroom.com for just $29.99 or call 1-800-394-5871 now. Order today and we'll include our Helio dustpan absolutely free. We'll also throw in the Helio Mini, yours free too. Use the Helio Mini on your couch or furniture to clean fur quick and easy. And for the car, watch as Helio Mini cleans fur trapped in your car's carpet better than a vacuum. That's right, you can get the Helio Air Broom plus the Helio Dustpan and the Helio Mini. A $60 value for only $29.99, so order now. Hey there, stop changing channels. I'm out here in the woods and you gotta see this. It's the new Patriot Power Generator 2000X, a solar generator worth its weight in gold when your power goes out with double the capacity and expandable so you can run your fridge even longer. It's fume free, safe to use inside and never needs gas ever. Plus you'll get this solar panel free. Go to 4 and do it now. Get your solar generator with free shipping and free panel at 4 Between dance recitals and soccer practice, we don't have time for spring cleaning. For $19, Homaglow did it for us. They vacuumed, washed the dishes, even wiped down our windows. Homaglow's cleaners are local, which we love. And they have amazing reviews. Our house looks good, we feel good, and we're so ready for summer. All you have to do is pick a date, choose a cleaner, and book your spring cleaning today for just $19.
President Biden's re-election campaign calling it a record in political fundraising. Tonight's star-studded event at Radio City Music Hall, raking in an eye-popping $25 million, according to the campaign. For some perspective, that's more than half of the $53 million the campaign raised during the entire month of February. News Nation's Kelly Myers live at the White House. Kelly, while the money is there, a lot of big-name celebrities have yet to back the president this time around. Yeah, Nick, Taylor Swift comes to mind, and she didn't endorse uh, President Joe Biden last time until right before the 2020 election. But the Biden-Harris campaign is having no problem bringing in the bucks even without that endorsement. This star-studded New York City fundraiser tonight setting records, the campaign calling it the most successful political fundraiser in American history. And the event itself will be historic, with three presidents, two former, one current, taking the stage for a conversation moderated by Stephen Colbert. If you want a picture with the three presidents taken by celebrity photographer Annie Leibovitz, it will cost you $100,000. There's a long list of celebrity guests from host Mindy Kaling to Leah Michelle, and there's also musical gacks from Queen Latifah to Lizzo, who is still facing a sexual harassment lawsuit filed by three of her former dancers. Now, the cheapest ticket is $250, but go for as much as $500,000. The one-night showcase showing off Biden's fundraising power over his Republican challenger and 2020 rival, former President Donald Trump, who raised $20 million in February, Biden raising more than that with just this one event. So Biden is tapping into his war chest for a $30 million rollout of ads in battleground states. And it seems to be helping. New polling has Biden narrowing the gap with Trump in six out of the seven battleground states. As for help from the former president, a source familiar tells me Biden keeps in regular contact with both Clinton and Obama. The campaign telling me Obama plans to be at more fundraisers out on the campaign trail and will be in more ads set to roll out very soon. He was also just on Air Force One with the president. We saw photos of that coming in moments ago. Nick. Kelly, I got to ask, though, what does a $250 ticket get? You. Do you sit at the table with major? <laughs> so $250 gets you in the room, but that top ticket at $500,000 gets you more of an intimate setting. Uh, but the $250 gets you inside the event. Not sure how close it gets you. I'm pretty but sure not too close, particularly if major is going to be there. Kelly Meyer at the White House. Kelly, thank you so much. The celebrity stronghold doesn't seem to go as deep this election cycle for either candidate. A candidate with a star-studded camp to back him could prove to be valuable in the 11th hour, and with a shorter list than usual, is making some worry. Here's who rallied in support of Biden and Trump back in 2020. Many of these A-listers can boost support with their enormous fan base and really influence election results. Cliff Chenfeld is owner of Razor & Tie, a music company holding several gold and platinum records and partners in music festivals around the country and joins us live. Uh, Cliff, one of the reasons we wanted to talk to you about this topic is because we really do want to know how important is that music influence? Well, I think it's important, but I think that some of the ways that we've looked at it in the past in terms of celebrity endorsements are maybe not as important as people spreading the word via social media and their various platforms. Uh, you know, in, in previous days, if Beyonce or Bruce Springsteen endorsed a candidate, that seemed to be important. But today, it would be much more important, I think, to be activating uh, fans uh, of, these, of these musicians. And they could be getting them to register to vote, activating them on issues in a much more direct way than just having somebody appear at a fundraiser a week before the election and saying, you know, vote for the candidate. Cliff, so, one I have to believe, too, that putting together one of these events uh, can't be easy either. Uh, not only talking about the different schedules and things, but you're trying to find artists that actually appeal to uh, the fan base of that particular candidate as well, right? And uh, I'm thinking artists who may not want to associate their brand with a particular candidate. Well, I think that's a very good point. First of all, I think we have to recognize that it's, it's March. And a lot of people who are going to get involved in this campaign have not yet decided to do that. I think not because of a lack of uh, enthusiasm for President Biden, but just more because it's a long campaign and this can be exhausting. And in a country in which uh, there's a fairly large partisan divide, a lot of uh, musicians, a lot of artists do not necessarily want to weigh in on that that early. Second, you have to, I think, recognize that there's different ways that artists can help. They can encourage people to register to vote. 
They can message on issues that might be favorable to President Biden, be it climate change or the right to choose or a variety of other issues without explicitly uh, mentioning uh, the election itself. So I think you're going to see a great variety of activity that's going to come. It just hasn't quite come yet. And I don't think, again, that that is a, a problem at this point. Cliff, let me ask you this. In your professional capacity, when you've worked with different groups who have been asked to partner uh, with different causes or uh, different pieces of activism, how do you usually advise them? Well, I think part of the issue is what kind of message does that organization want to send and who their constituents are? There are a lot of people who are very supportive of President Biden, but for whatever reason don't want to engage in partisan politics. And so they can come in via different routes, issue-based sorts of things. Uh, voter registration, which typically, if, if historical trends uh, continue, would favor a demographic that would be more inclined to vote for President Biden. So you're really trying to find the right way to express uh, that artist's or that organization's point of view without alienating perhaps some of their uh, core fans and being as effective as possible. Cliff Chenfield, owner of Razor and Tie. And Cliff, I can tell you now, we will be checking back in with you around September, October to see if people jump on board. Okay, looking forward to that. I think we'll be in good shape. Hey, thank you so much and have a great day. Coming up, a college student found dead after a massive two week search. Up next, new exclusive details about the moment Riley Strain was pulled from a Nashville river. And after a wild day of action, the Sweet 16 is set. Y'all ready? Are y'all ready? A look at the big players next. With thyroid eye disease, I hid from the camera and I wanted to hide from the world. For years, I thought my TED was beyond help. But then I asked my doctor about Tepeza. Tepeza is the only medicine that treats TED at the source, not just the symptoms. In a clinical study, more than 8 out of 10 patients taking Tepeza had less eye bulging. Tepeza is an infusion and may cause infusion reactions. Tell your doctor right away if you experience high blood pressure, fast heartbeat, shortness of breath, or muscle pain. Before treatment, tell your doctor if you have diabetes, IBD, or are pregnant or planning to become pregnant. Tepeza may raise blood sugar and may worsen IBD. Tepeza may cause severe hearing problems, which may be permanent. Now. I'm ready to be seen again. Visit mytepeza.com to find a TED eye specialist and to see Bridget's before and after photos. I'm Jonathan Lawson. If you're 50 to 85, I have an important message about security. Write down the number on your screen so you can call when I finish. The lock I want to talk to you about isn't the one on your door. This is a lock for your life insurance, a rate lock that guarantees that once you're insured, your rate can never go up at any time for any reason. But be careful. Many policies you see do not have one, but you can get a lifetime rate lock from Colonial Pen. Call this number to learn more. This plan was designed with a rate lock for people on a fixed income who want life insurance that fits their budget and is simple to get. Coverage options start at $9.95 a month, less than 35 cents a day. Act now and your rate will be locked in for life. It will never increase, guaranteed. This is lifelong coverage that can never be canceled as long as you pay your premiums, guaranteed. And your acceptance is guaranteed, with no health questions. You cannot be turned down because of your health. Call for your information kit and read about this rate lock for yourself. You'll also get a free beneficiary planner. Both are free with no obligation. Don't miss out. Call for information, then decide. Read about the 30-day 100% money-back guarantee. Don't wait. Call this number now. Call now and you'll also get this free beneficiary planner. Use this valuable guide to record important information and your final wishes. And it's yours free just for calling. So don't wait. Call 1-800-377-5321 for your free information. That's 1-800-377-5321. There's no risk or obligation. That number again is 1-800-377-5321. That's 1-800-377-5321. So call now. Attention former Marines and family members stationed to Camp Lejeune. If you lived or worked at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, 
for at least 30 days from August 1953 to December 1987 and have been diagnosed with cancer, neurobehavioral effects, had a child born with birth defects or been diagnosed with fertility issues or more, significant compensation may be available. Call Legal Injury Advocates now to discuss your case. Call 1-800-885-3737. That's 1-800-885-3737. Call now. Welcome back. There's a new mystery surrounding the recovered body of Mizzou student Riley Strain. His body was found in Nashville's Cumberland River two weeks after he vanished on March 8th during a night out with friends. The coroner's report said no foul play is suspected, but Riley's family is not so sure. They ordered a second autopsy after Riley was found not wearing pants or his cowboy boots, his wallet missing. In a News Nation exclusive with Brian Enton on Elizabeth Vargas reports, a family friend spoke about new information in this case. And senior national correspondent Brian Enton joins us with the very latest. Brian, this story has been difficult from the beginning because we've had the parents on Morning in America uh, here with us and, and we could hear their pain. This uh, has to be tough all the way around and now they even have more questions, Brian, that they're not getting answers to. Yeah, they do, and it has been hard, Nick. You know, uh, Riley's funeral is tomorrow in Missouri, so they're going through that right now, and they just still have this feeling that that part of this does not make a lot of sense, which is one of the reasons that they ordered uh, that second autopsy. They had a, a private person come in and perform an autopsy, and they're waiting on the full results of that, waiting on toxicology tests. Of course, there's been no foul play suspected. That's according to police. Uh, but the family just questions why Riley's genes and size 15 cowboy boots were not on him uh, when he was found. His shirt was still on him, his Apple watch was still on him, but the pants and the boots uh, were gone, which does not make a lot of sense to the family. It's one of the reasons they wanted the second autopsy. Uh, listen to what the family spokesman told me yesterday. One thing that threw the family for a loop was, uh, you know, the coroner going on record with uh, a news person in Nashville stating about the lack of water in his lungs. Uh, it raises more questions, you know. Uh, I, I'm not a crime drama person by no means, but usually water in the lungs uh, means that, you know, they were alive when they went into the water. So more questions. Uh, we hope they're gonna get some answers with the toxicology. Uh, you know, I just I just hope that this doesn't get swept underneath the rug because the family deserves more, more answers than we have. What about the boots, Chris? Tell us what you've learned in terms of what uh, Riley was wearing and what he wasn't wearing when he was discovered. Uh, Riley, we were we were told, which blew the family away. It actually went out on social media. Unfortunately, the only thing that was found with him, uh, as the police stated in the report, was the watch and the shirt. Uh, everything else was not with him when he was found. Uh, that they were told by the coroner that there was, was no water or very little water in Riley's lungs, which to the family didn't make a lot of sense, considering uh, they were told that he likely drowned. Uh, it turns out it is possible for a drowning to happen where someone does not have uh, water in their lungs. It, it doesn't happen often, but it does happen. Uh, coming up tonight on Elizabeth Vargas Reports, 5 o'clock Eastern, we're going to interview a medical examiner about the likelihood of that, about all of this, because, Nick, th there really are a lot of outstanding questions still, um, and the family's hoping that police will keep the investigation open. They're hoping that police will continue to interview people, because, you know, there were a lot of homeless people in that area near where Riley went missing, uh, and the family believes that they need to continue going out there and trying to talk to those people about what what they actually saw. And Brian, and like this, and stories that you cover on Crime Nation, more than anything, families deserve to have answers. Brian Enton, senior yeah. national correspondent at News Nation. Brian, thank you so much. Thanks, Nick. Well, still to come, March Madness is in full swing. The Sweet 16 tips off tonight. What to expect on the court next. And as millions of Americans head to religious services this weekend for Easter, is politics playing a bigger role in what some pastors preach? Thank you, News Nation, the best balance and insightful coverage on American TV. And your show is what we need. We need more Chris Cuomo. We need more News Nation. Cuomo, weeknights at 8, 7 central, only on News Nation. News for all America. I met with the TurboTax expert because I had two full-time jobs, lawyering and Miami. Count on me, Mia. I'll file your taxes for you with 100% accuracy guaranteed. 
Let a TurboTax full service expert do your taxes as soon as today. Vehicle breakdowns are costly. It started making some really weird noises. If your check engine light comes on tomorrow, the repair could easily cost thousands. Is that transmission? But with endurance, you could never pay out of pocket for a costly repair again. They covered a $14,000 engine replacement. $1,400. Endurance paid it. Who's going to pay for your next car repair? You or Endurance? Call right now to get $300 off any plan. Call now. Stay tuned to get this five-piece ultra non-stick bakeware set free from Granite Stone. What the stuck? Holy bird, where's the lid? Are you tired of yelling at your old pans? You know you need a new set, but the prices are so high it's obscene. Well, a kitchen full of the most durable ultra nonstick cookware is now available at the best price anywhere. And it's Granite Stone, the fast, easy way to cook gourmet family meals quick that just don't stick. No butter or oil needed. Each piece of Granite Stone cookware is pressed from a solid aluminum disc for even heat conduction and coated three Three times with our durable ultra nonstick granite stone finish. Granite stone is oven rated up to 500 degrees for outstanding roasting and come with vented tempered glass lids to prevent boil over. Plus, all granite stone cookware is 100% dishwasher and metal utensil safe. Look, you'd expect to pay up to $500 for a professional quality cookware set. But during this special TV introduction, you can get the granite stone 12 piece cookware set, not for five, four, or even $300. But for the factory direct price of just five easy payments of $49.95. And for everyone who orders today, we're going to drop one payment. You get it all for just four easy payments of $49.95. As a bonus, we'll include our self draining fry basket, stainless steel steamer insert, and the steamer rack, absolutely free. And there's even more. You'll get our five piece granite stone bakeware set, the fast easy ultra nonstick way to bake up your favorite desserts. Together, they're a $110 value, yours free. That's an incredible 20 piece granite stone set, all for just four easy payments of $49.95. Plus we'll ship your entire order free. Order now. To order call 1-800-932-6574 or go online to granitestoneset.com. That's 1-800-932-6574 or go to granitestoneset.com. According to a recent study, that first blast of hot water in the morning can be oh. packed with dangerous oh. pathogens. Wake up to AquaCare, the breakthrough handheld showerhead with antimicrobial nozzles that inhibit the growth of mold, mildew, and bacteria inside. The secret is Germ Shield antimicrobial technology that works 24-7 at a molecular level to protect AquaCare nozzles from bacterial contamination. AquaCare's anti-clog nozzles remain clog-free for superior water pressure and flow with eight amazing settings. Plus, just flip the head and AquaCare turns into a power wash. Call or go online to get your AquaCare with Germ Shield for just $29.99. Order right now and we'll instantly upgrade your order with an extra-long stainless steel hose and a low-reach water all bracket yours absolutely free plus we'll ship your entire order free call or go online to buy aquacare.com order now the madness continues march madness is in full swing with sweet 16 tipping off tonight the teams were working out on the court yesterday getting set for the games the men's sweet 16 games start tonight and four games for the women tomorrow all the one seeds and two seeds are still in with a look at who do we expect to see in the final four and the week's games. Uh, TV personality and journalist Baker Machado is here to break it down for us. Baker, good afternoon. Yes, Nick, good to see you. Yeah, we started with 68 teams, and now we're down to the final Sweet 16. There are no more perfect brackets, by the way, also, according to reports, out of the millions that were created in the lead-up to the tournament. Everyone's brackets pretty much busted in the opening rounds, thanks in large part to Yale, of course. But many of the teams that are still in the top seeds still in there, so a lot of familiar faces. As you mentioned, all eight teams seeded one or two have advanced to the Sweet 16. Now, for the fifth time since the tournament began seeding teams back in 1979. So let's talk about some of those matchups, Nick. Tonight, number six Clemson kicks things off against number two Arizona. That starts at 7 p.m. Eastern. Then we get the good one later tonight. Last year's finals, a rematch as we get number five San Diego State 
playing the favorite number one UConn. That starts at 740 Eastern. We should note UConn won this last year, yep. and everybody thinks UConn's even better this year. UConn's an 11 and a half point favorite in that matchup. And then you see the other two games, Alabama taking on number one, North Carolina. That's at 940. And then we get number three, Illinois taking on Iowa State. That's the late one, Nick. That is about 10 p.m. Eastern, so some very good television to watch tonight. That's tonight. And, and Baker, I'm going to tell you that uh, I definitely believe that Good Friday is going to be on fire, too. I lived in North Carolina for a while, and you cannot escape the fever of the Wolfpack. Um, what do you expect yeah. with NC State? NC State has been sort of the Cinderella darling. And as I mentioned, all the top seeds are in. NC State is the lowest seeded team that we got left at an 11 seed. And Marquette, they're playing them. They're the number two seed. I'm from Colorado. Colorado almost beat Marquette in the last game. Mm -hmm. So if there's a chance for your Wolfpack, this potentially could be it. The other games, we also got Gonzaga and Purdue, Duke and Houston, and Creighton and Tennessee tomorrow as well, Nick. And you know that's the only time people ever pronounce Gonzaga the correct way is when we're talking about Sweet 16, right? <laughs> Listen, I want to go back to NC State. Uh, the power forward, uh, DJ Burns Jr., is he NC State's uh, not-so-secret weapon at this point? I mean, he has had an amazing tournament so far. I mean, you would think so. I mean, NC State has been such a big surprise. And you hope these smaller seeds get into the to the later rounds. And so a lot of people probably going to bet on NC State for the upset here on Marquette. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, UConn still the betting favorite here to win this entire thing. NC State's not picked to be in the Final Four. Right now, that's Purdue, uh, Houston, and North Carolina likely going to make that. Arizona sort of rounding that out as well. But I'm hoping for NC State as as well. I love to see a Cinderella upset here. Baker, I can remember a time, I'm old enough to remember a time, I should have said, where you did not have a Final Four where Duke was not part of the equation, and that is not the case this time around. Baker Machado, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, Nick. All right, still to come, why some pastors are beginning to preach about hot-button political issues. An alarming trend in New York City, women being randomly attacked on the streets in broad daylight. That and more when we come back. Numbers move you, but some can stop you in your tracks, like the tens of thousands of people who were diagnosed with certain HPV-related cancers. For most people, HPV clears on its own, but for those who don't clear the virus, it can cause certain cancers. Gardasil 9 is a vaccine given to adults through age 45 that can help protect against certain diseases caused by HPV, including cervical, vaginal, vulvar, anal, and certain head and neck cancers, such as throat and back of mouth cancers and genital warts. Gardasil 9 doesn't protect everyone and does not treat cancer or HPV infection. Your doctor may recommend screening for certain HPV-related cancers. Women still need routine cervical cancer screenings. You shouldn't get Gardasil 9 if you've had an allergic reaction to the vaccine, its ingredients, or are allergic to yeast. Tell your doctor if you have a weakened immune system, are pregnant, or plan to be. The most common side effects include injection site reactions, headache, fever, nausea, dizziness, tiredness, diarrhea, abdominal pain, and sore throat. Fainting can also happen. Help protect what counts. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist about Gardasil 9. We all know that words have power. They set things in motion. And make us happy or sad. But there's one word that stands out because when people say it, lives are changed. It's not a big word. It's itsy bitsy. It's only three little letters. But when you say it, the life of a kid like me can be changed. So what is this special word? It may surprise you. It's yes. 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 Yes to becoming a monthly supporter of Shriners Hospitals for Children. That's right. Your monthly support allows the doctors and nurses at Shriners Hospitals for Children to give the most amazing care anywhere and change the lives of kids like me. And me. And me. Because people like you have said yes. Now I can play football. And I can play catch. And I can walk. So what do you say? Will you say yes right now? It's so easy. All you have to do is pick up the phone or go to loveshriners.org right now and say yes. When you say yes to giving just $19 a month, only 63 cents a day, we'll send you this adorable love to the rescue blanket as a reminder of all the kids you're helping every day. My life is filled with possibility because of the monthly support of people just like you who called the number on your screen and said yes. 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 
Yes, your yes is making a difference in my life and the lives of so many other kids like me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for giving. Please call or go online now. If operators are busy, call again or go to loveshriners.org to say yes right away. At SafeLight, we'll take care of fixing your windshield. But did you know we can take care of your insurance claim? That means less stress for you. Thanks. My pleasure. Have a good one. You too. Schedule today at SafeLight.com. SafeLight Repair, SafeLight Replace. We got the house! <laughs> did. Pods handles the driving. Pack at your pace, store your things until you're ready, then we deliver to your new home, across town or across the country. Pods, your personal moving and storage team. Thank you, News Nation, the best balanced and insightful coverage on American TV. And your show is what we need. We need more Chris Cuomo. We need more News Nation. Cuomo, weeknights at 8, 7 central, only on News Nation. News for all America. As millions of Americans head to religious services this weekend for Easter, is politics playing a bigger role in what some pastors preach? News Nation's Adrian Baker has a rare interview with pastor at Eagle Mountain International Church out of Texas. You know, Adrian, one of the things you and I have had an opportunity to talk about before is how important religion is in so many people's lives, and mm -hmm. it's being overlooked in many cases. Well, it's just, I think it's unfortunate. A lot of journalists happen to be uncomfortable with talking about faith. And it's not about talking about their faith. It's talking about how prevalent faith is in America. Gallup research, Pew research shows over 60% of Americans are Christians. Over 80% believe in God. And so when you identify with that value system, you vote differently, you think differently, you think differently about the government. And this is going to be something that I think, pay, you know, we all should be paying a lot of attention to leading up to November 2024. But I, I want to play a little clip uh, from my interview here and let the audience listen before we uh, proceed. Can people talk about you really, Pastor, you really shouldn't talk about politics, but the things that are involved in politics touch the things that are involved in the Bible. I'm not being political, I'm being biblical. And when I address things about abortion, when I address things about the various issues that we face, all of those things are biblical, and I have every right to stand in my pulpit and talk about what's biblical and talk to people about what we should be standing for and what we should be believing for. This is a phrase that I believe we're going to hear a lot more, uh, not just from these particular pastors. You mentioned how rare the interview is. Uh, Pastor George and Terry Pearson, they do not do press. They do not have interviews uh, with journalists, but they did speak to me. And I think a lot of churches are wary because they feel like, are you going to tell the story right. accurately with fluency? You know, understanding different denominations within the Christian uh, diaspora. Uh, but uh, being political is not what they're trying to be. They really are saying it's not about politics. It's about being biblical and sticking with what they believe the Bible says about how we should be living. Because so much about the Bible is also about community. And we feel mm -hmm. like that so much of that has fallen by the wayside as well because of the absence of religion. Yeah, well, and, and I think that people like to say, you know, this is about our faith. This is about... I don't want to compare it to this, but more and more we hear people talk about mental health. Mm -hmm. Mental health is something that we don't fully understand. Mental health is something that is, in one sense, invisible. It's based on things that you're thinking, things that you believe about yourself. You seek help. You seek counsel. That could describe a person who's of faith. Absolutely. But, faith is evidence of things unseen. Yeah, yeah. And, and for people to believe something about themselves so strongly and to it, you know, act as though that doesn't have an effect on how we govern cities and states and the nation uh, is really, you know, it's, just, it's kind of mind-blowing to me that we don't have more of these conversations. So here at News Nation, we're not shying away from that. Uh, I, you're going to hear this entire conversation I had with uh, Pastor George and Terry Pearson on YouTube, uh, 3 p.m. every Thursday. Love we're that. live uh, with this new content just so that people, whether you believe or not, can get perspective because so many times certain voices have not come to the forefront. And yet there is a significant block of voters who will be voting, who are fed up and tired. I, in my research and, and just getting ready for this conversation, there's a group 
uh, that's very active called Faith Wins, not affiliated with this church. Uh, but they saw how few people of faith were voting. And so they go out every single year and actually talk to tens of thousands of pastors wow. because st studies show that if a pastor stands up and says, this is important, we need to discuss this, then the congregation will pay attention and register to vote. We're not talking about pastors breaking the law and endorsing certain candidates. We're talking about them actually getting their congregations to mobilize, be involved in the democratic process, and actually go to the ballot box. And not be afraid to lean into their faith. Not be afraid. I mean, it's who they are. Absolutely. Adrian Baker, thank you so much. Absolutely. And I'm where can we find here. that? Again, every Thursday, 3 p.m. Eastern Time on YouTube, One Nation Under God is the name of our new series. We hope to provoke empathy, a new perspective, and allow voices that previously were not heard to be broadcast because every, every one of us has a different perspective. Thank you so much, Adrian. Thank you.